compression ignition engine is very sensitive to the timing of the injection pump. And whenever a pump is overhauled, it is most important that it be re-timed, both in relation to the phase angle between the various cylinders and to the engine by means of the spill method, which has the advantage of not requiring elaborate apparatus. When carrying out a test in the workshop, the pump is fixed to a special base plate, which carries two lugs for mounting in a vise. Damage may occur to the pump body if the pump is mounted direct into a vise. The pump is mounted so that the coupling end is towards the operator. Screws holding the inspection cover plate in position are released and the cover plate removed. A fuel container is fitted to the inlet connection stud at the end of the pump. In this case, a standard CAV filter with felt element is being used. Cleanliness is of paramount importance in connection with fuel injection equipment and should be scrupulously observed when dismantling or testing. Fuel is poured into the container with the container tap turned off. The taper end of the camshaft carries a line which denotes top dead center of the cam nearest to the end of the shaft. A similar line is marked on the coupling which should coincide with that on the shaft. For ease in finding the top dead center position of number one cam when the shaft is fitted to a pump, a similar line will be found in the center of the pump end plate. Thus, when the shaft line is coincident with this line on the end plate, it is known that number one cam is in the top dead center position. Number one cylinder is on the left hand side, looking on the inspection cover. The coupling is fitted to the end of the camshaft and secured in position by means of a woodruff key, lock washer, and nut. The coupling is held by a special tool whilst tightening the nut on the camshaft. To the coupling is fitted an adapter piece, onto which is bolted a graduated disc marked off in degrees together with a handle. The camshaft is turned by means of the handle so that number one cam is in top dead center as indicated by the line. And in this position, it should be possible to feel a clearance of about half a millimeter by means of a lever placed between the tappet screws. The lever should be operated gently to prevent damaging the top of the plunger and the joint face of the pump housing. The existence of this movement, which can be adjusted by means of the tappet screw, is extremely important in order to avoid the end of the plunger protruding through the barrel and hitting against the bottom of the delivery valve seat. If we put the delivery valve body in position on this model, you will see what would happen. An easy way to set the head clearance for the first time is to bring number one cam to top dead center and screw up the tappet screw until the top of the plunger just contacts the delivery valve. Now as the pitch of the tappet screw thread is one millimeter, the necessary 0.5 millimeter clearance can be obtained by turning the tappet screw half a turn down and locking it. Here is the pump element, which consists of a plunger on which is machined a control helix. The plunger working in a barrel having a suction port and spill or control port. 
the spill port being the one with the elongated slot. Before proceeding further, a pointer is attached to the extension piece, screwed into the closing plug, and is set to indicate the degree marking on the wheel. At this stage, the locking plate and number one valve holder are removed. Then the spring is taken out, placed in clean oil, the valve extracted, and also placed in the oil bath. Cleaned with four flutes, up which the fuel passes, but cannot escape into the pipeline until the valve lifts from its seat. The holder is now replaced on the pump and screwed into position, taking care not to use excessive tightening force. On the delivery valve holder, a swan neck pipe is fitted for better observation of the spill. If the control rod is in the stop position, the vertical slot on the plunger will be in communication with the spill port, which will never be closed and fuel will continue to flow from the swan neck pipe, making it impossible to time the pump by this method. In carrying out this test, therefore, the control rod must be set in the running position when there will be a definite point at which the plunger during its rise will close the barrel ports. With the control rod in its running position and the plunger at bottom dead center, fuel from the tank is turned on and flows under gravity through the suction chamber, the barrel ports, and out through the swan neck pipe. And as the camshaft is turned slightly to bring number one cam to top dead center, and the plunger rises and the ports are closed, the flow gradually diminishes until it stops altogether. This is known as the point of port closure or spill cutoff, and is just a few degrees before injection into the cylinder commences. Having found this point, the operator adjusts the graduated disc so that zero marking coincides with the tip of the pointer. Care must be exercised in deciding the exact point at which flow ceases. We now have number one element set with the point of port closure indicated by the pointer coinciding with the zero marking on the wheel. The swan neck pipe and the delivery valve holder are now removed. The valve and spring are washed in clean fuel oil and the whole assembly refitted. The delivery valve holder is screwed in and tightened by means of a special spanner designed for this purpose. The fuel should now be turned off to prevent waste. As the firing order of this particular pump is one, four, two, six, three, five, when driven in a clockwise direction, number four element is now dealt with in the same way. First of all, removing the valve and spring then replacing the valve holder together with the swan neck pipe. The point of port closure for number four element is found by the same method as for number one. And if the tappet is correctly adjusted, it should be 60 degrees after number one element, 90 degrees on a four cylinder pump. It will be seen here that the phase angle is incorrect. The fuel is turned off and adjustment is made to the tappet screw 
in order to raise or lower the plunger in relation to the camshaft. If the phase angle is over 60 degrees, then the tappet screw is raised. If it is under 60 degrees, then it is lowered. The tappet screw is held by a lock nut, which must be loosened first. After the screw has been adjusted, the lock nut is re-tightened. It may be noted that one complete revolution of the adjusting screw is equal to approximately six degrees on the camshaft. Having made adjustments, the operator turns on the fuel and checks again the point of port closure. He now finds that the previous discrepancy has been corrected, as the pointer now indicates 60 degrees reading exactly. The fuel is turned off and the plunger placed in the top dead center position, because as adjustment has been made to the tappet, it is necessary to check again for clearance. Number four valve holder can now be removed and the valve and spring washed clean and replaced. The remaining elements in the pump are then phased in the same way and necessary adjustments made in order to obtain the correct phase angle between them. During phasing, it is possible that the pointer or even the disc may have been moved slightly out of position and it is necessary therefore to go back once again to number one element and ensure that the initial setting point has not been interfered with. The point of port closure on number one element is rechecked. The coupling is held steady so that it may be scribed with a line to coincide with that already marked on the pump end plate or in some cases on the timing plate. The operation is now complete and the valve assembly is refitted. A few turns are given to the camshaft in order to clear the pump of any oil lying in the suction chamber. It should be remembered during all these tests that the camshaft must be turned in the direction of rotation in which it runs when fitted to the engine. The inspection cover is refitted, the fuel container removed, and the pointer taken off. The pump is now ready for refitting to the engine and it can be timed in relation to the engine crankshaft by following the engine maker's instructions. If the pump is to remain in stores for some period, the delivery valve holders and the inlet connection should be covered or plugged to prevent the ingress of dust. Dirt is the engine and simple precautions like this may save much wear and expensive overhauls to the CAV fuel injection equipment.